Hello, everyone, and welcome again to our second series of interviews we will be releasing to our parish community this Lent. This week, we're going to interview Jessica, who's been with us, who's been with us in the church for quite a while. But each week, we'll introduce you to one of our RCIA candidates who are nearing the completion of their adult initiation into our church. During these interviews, we hope to share with you both the candidates and their journey, but also shed some light on the right of Christian initiation of adults, which is what RCIA stands for. Since COVID has thrown a wrench in the works of our public celebrations of RCIA at Mass, one of the main ways we learn about our candidates and catechumens, as well as the importance of RCIA for our community in general, has been lost. So this year we have five candidates or individuals seeking initiation or full reception into the Catholic Church. Three of them are coming to us from other Christian faiths, and in the RCIA, we refer to them as candidates. They have a special status and are already considered as part of the church, the people of God, by the grace of their baptism in another Christian tradition. These three candidates journey alongside our two catechumens, or those preparing for baptism. Catechumen translates as instructed, and like the word catechesis in general, it refers to instruction in our church's traditions and teachings. So last week, I mentioned that RCIA is not just for our candidates and catechumens, but for everyone in the church. What we mean by that is twofold. First, is that mission and welcome to outsiders and new members is a fundamental aspect of our identity as a people sent to proclaim the kingdom of God. Secondly, and this is a little more tricky to understand, is that cycling through the liturgical seasons of our church year renews us. But this cycle is meant for welcoming and initiating new members mostly. While our, our renewal each year is supposed to come from journeying with those new members whose initiation grows and renews the church, which is us. So this week, we will be talking to Jessica. And Jessica has been with us for a long time, actually, about 10 years with when her and her partner first walked through our doors as students for our university mass. They now have a little baby who we welcomed before Christmas into our church through baptism. So for the first question, so you know, you've been with us for around 10 years and how have you built a home for yourself and what ministries did you get involved with? Oh, you're muted, sorry. One of the things that first drew us to St. Joe's as university students, grad students, about a decade ago, was the sense of just open and welcoming, of friendliness, of community. The first mass that we went to, multiple people came up and said hi to us and welcomed us. We obviously really enjoyed the mass itself, and we felt such a wonderful sense of belonging and connection and welcoming that we just realized that that was our home church. And we, that was a decision that both of us felt very strongly about and felt right away, uh, made that connection and that decision to keep coming back and sign up as parishioners. And I have to say one of the things that really helped to make that experience so wonderful was the music ministry. I was really drawn. I was very impressed with uh, the choir. I loved the music that was chosen. And I felt that there was a real sense of joy and just such a wonderful way to praise um, and to have that as being such an integral part of the mass. And so that really appealed to me. And that's the ministry I was first uh, connected with and involved with. I was a member of uh, the choir for about two and a half years. And I'm actually looking forward to reconnecting with the choir. I have rejoined and I'm very excited to be singing again with the group. So you'll hopefully see me uh, in some, as soon as we're allowed to meet again, of course, and uh, virtually in the interim. But I just, for me, the music ministry was so appealing because I feel like it's such a wonderful way to praise and connect with God through music. Um, there are oftentimes I would just feel such a wonderful 
sense where we'd be singing a particular hymn and my heart would just fill with joy and happiness. And for me, that was just a wonderful way to kind of bridge the human and the divine to find a really good way of showing praise and gratitude and love. And so that was the ministry uh, that really appealed to me and helped to bring me into the church. And I'm very excited to be reconnecting with that group again. So are you, what, I mean, with COVID and everything, but would you be probably the 930 then, right? So usually uh, we attend the 930 mass, that's right. And obviously what we'll have to see with the rules, um, how things go with COVID, but I, I know the choir is going to be performing some virtual uh, pieces in the interim, so I'm joining in with that part now, and hopefully as soon as we can meet again in person, we'll, we'll sort that out, like I'll, I'll come to whichever mass the choir is able to sing at, so yeah. oh, <laughs> we'll see how perfect. that unfolds. <laughs> <laughs> cool, and was your partner in the choir too? Yes, he was, and I'm hoping he might rejoin again <laughs> uh, as well in the future. He's just a little busy right now with he's a teacher so of course the whole revamping of the curriculum and constantly having to rework everything he's he's got a lot on his plate right now so it's a bit much of a time commitment at the moment but uh I know he loves to sing and that was something we certainly really enjoyed doing together so who knows maybe one day we'll uh see him join us as well yeah oh that'd be cool <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to ask about the first time you felt called to explore the Catholic Church. How long ago was it? And what re recently, because you've been with us for 10 years, what recently was the impetus for taking those steps to the St. Joe's RCIA program? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, it was really that sense of welcoming and community that we experienced as St. Joe's. Uh, I myself had grown up in the uh, Anglican faith. That's where I was baptized and confirmed way back when <laughs> in Vancouver, uh, when I was 13 years old. I'd been to a couple churches over the years, different ones, um, but, and I enjoyed them and the services were lovely, but it, it, it really was St. Joe's that made that, that welcoming, that connection. And I, I, it's all those things I mentioned earlier, just the people and the service. And of course, our wonderful uh, father, Jim, as well, who's here. We just, it was so wonderful. And we just, we just felt called, we felt connected. And we just kept coming back. <laughs> and for the RCA program, like at this point? So yes, this of was course. More... Um, mm -hmm. And I think the biggest change for us certainly was the change in our family. Having a little boy we had wanted and hoped for for very, very many years. And when big life changes like that happen, you go through a natural reevaluation, you know, of your life and what's important. And a lot of the things that were so important to me that, you know, kept me busy or sometimes would take me away on Sundays you know, being on an ultimate team that did tournaments, for example, on the weekends, things like that, all of a sudden, those things just weren't as important anymore. And I think for us, just kind of refocusing on the family and just deciding how we wanted to move forward as a family and what was important to us. And we wanted to have Jacob, little Jacob, have that experience of that wonderful connection to God, to the church, to the community, and just something that we could do together as a family and kind of grow into. And so Jacob was certainly the, the impetus and it was so lovely to reconnect with the baptism. Kathy did a phenomenal job of walking us through the whole process and everyone helping us out, of course, you know, Jamie and Andrew and Father Jim did such a lovely ceremony. And, all of those moments of reconnection just kept reaffirming, you know, how much we belonged. And I had actually been thinking about the RCAA for quite a long time and other things in life sort of always tended to kind of get in the way. It was something I always, I was interested in and wanted to explore and just hadn't taken that step to actually do it and commit to it. And so now of course was the time, you know, I am home on that leave at the moment and I have time to think <laughs> about things despite the exhaustion of raising a new baby. And it's, it just felt like all the things kind of aligned. It was something I wanted to go forward with the family. And I also wanted to be a full member of St. Joe's. I really do feel like St. Joe's is my church. And 
to be able to partake in all of the sacraments, you know, communion and things like that. It was a very important part of my faith growing up. And just to be able to fully participate in that, to be a full member of the church that I feel drawn to is uh, why now was the ideal time. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, so we've been meeting every other week for quite a while. And in our teaching sessions, what was something that stood out to you positively and excited and interested you? Oh, that's an easy one. I think one of the things that most excited me recently in the last couple of weeks was the session that we did on social justice. And it's funny because I, when I was younger, I had always associated the Catholic church with being, you know, very stuffy and very traditional and sometimes out of date. And yet to see the ways in which the modern church has evolved and is really stepping up on a global scale in terms of a lot of those social issues. Like we, there's a lot of problems in the world, whether it comes to human rights issues or environmental stewardship and the systems that we have, whether you know they're capitalist or communist, there's all kinds of mixes. None of those systems seem to have really nailed it in terms of being the kind of society that fully loves and supports all of its members. And so it's so important to have a moral compass. And I really think that that's a very important role for the church to take in our modern world. And I learned a lot about things that the church was doing in different parts of the world, uh, different uh, literature that was coming out, different conferences and bishops who were advocating in all these different parts of the world. And I just, I, I was very impressed with that. And I think that that's a very important role for the church to be playing and not just globally, but you know, also locally and in Canada, we've got a lot of issues on the environmental stewardship side. There's a lot of our communities that still don't have access to clean water. So there's such a vital role to be played there. And in terms of morality and how people treat each other. And I'm frankly, really excited and delighted to see the church taking such a leadership role on a lot of those big issues that governments haven't quite gotten around to tackling yet. Hmm. No, for sure. And now what was something that you struggled with and what was the process for you to overcome or be able to move past the initial hesitancy? This, this is a tricky one for me. And I've actually had to do a lot of thinking recently on some big issues. I think especially around the morality in terms of you know stem cell research or women's reproductive rights and things like that. And to be honest, it's still a work in progress in a lot of ways. I'm still trying to think through and reconcile one of the things that's really helped me through the RCIA process is just getting a better understanding of exactly where the church's position is coming from, uh, what base in scripture, why those decisions um, were made, and also to know, to, to see that how the church has evolved over time as well. I think certainly over the last couple decades, we've become a much more a welcoming, a kinder, more inclusive uh, church. And I think that's really important. So knowing that the church itself is kind of struggling and moving through a lot of these things, and we as individuals are certainly struggling with a lot of these big topics. And a lot of my friends who are Catholic are struggling with a lot of these things. And so knowing kind of what the base is and what, why the principles are there and why they're so important, and then reconciling that in terms of you know political versus moral and also for, for me i really think it comes down to you know this the spirit versus the letter of the law too sometimes a rule is put in place for a very specific and very clear reason and i mean sometimes there are some gray areas whether it comes to uh Sorry, I'm finding this a little bit tricky to talk about I'm because I'm still thinking through a lot of these things. But for me, just to get back to that sense of inner, inner morality, but also that the teachings, basically the, the premise or not the premise, the uh, 
when Jesus tells us to love, love our neighbor and treat ourselves others as we want to be treated ourselves, I think that going back to the base of love and inclusiveness is helping me and knowing that we're still struggling with some of these things and we're still moving forward to being more inclusive and welcoming as individuals and as a church and a society as a whole. So all of us moving kind of through that process together, it's certainly a work in progress. And I think, yeah, I'm still struggling with a few of those things, but going back to the base in scripture and the moral imperative to treat each other kindly and make sure that we're supporting and loving um, each other. I think that sort of helped me wrestle with a lot of those big moral conundrums. <laughs> no, exactly, oh, thank you. And then lastly, how has your relationship with Jesus developed over this RCIA period? And how has your journey of faith enriched your life? This has been a really wonderful experience for me because the last time I did a scriptural deep dive uh, was when I was confirmed and I was 13 years old at the time and I'm a very different person today. I have a very different perspective. I was a child then, whereas now I'm an adult. I've had a career, I have a family now. So really getting to kind of go through and look at the scripture again from the adult perspective, I think has been really good for me. And I've also really appreciated getting to talk through a lot of these things with the other members uh, in the RCIA group, the other candidates who are going through the process with me to be able to have those conversations with other adults and other adults who are entering uh, the faith and sometimes learning about a lot of these things for the first time, especially um, not just the Bible and the scripture, which I'm fairly familiar with, but just also the church and the tradition and uh, sort of the, the big Catholic <laughs> see. So I've, I've learned a lot of new things and I've had the opportunity to think and to reflect in terms of my own relationship as an adult and as a mother. And so I feel that that's kind of helped me re reestablish, reconnect. I've been excited to be going back to masses again. I am excited to have my son uh, being raised in the St. Joe's community. And so it's helped me reconnect and it's made me rethink and reevaluate and just get a stronger sense of why that relationship is important to me and my family. Oh, that's excellent. And are you excited for this weekend? I am, yes. <laughs> At 11.30, we'll be going to the 11.30 Mass. We have our um, special <laughs> introduction to uh, the church, our Lenten renewal rite. So I'm very excited about that. My sponsor, Bonnie, will be joining me as well. And yeah, it'll, it'll be so nice to actually be able to have that service, not only with the other uh, RCIA candidates, but also with those members who are there uh, in the church joining with us so it'll be the first time we as a group several of us get to meet get the first. church community <laughs> in the rcia role so that's a, it's very exciting i'm looking forward to it and i hope some of you will be able to join us <laughs> yeah so that's yeah that's this um that's uh this sunday uh february 28th at the 11 30 mass so we have our three candidates doing the the right of the calling of candidates for Lenten renewal. So it's you, um, so it's Jessica, Colette, and, oh, Bridget. Yeah, we, we just interviewed Bridget last week. Okay, excellent. So um, yeah, so thank you so much for, for, um, for, inter for being interviewed and uh, it's good to see you. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Sounds good. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, everyone.